At the end of July 2022, a number of Dior boutiques worldwide were greeted by Chinese protesters wearing the so-called Han Fu, the traditional style of clothing worn by the Han Chinese. In fact, this clothing is seldom, if ever, worn by Chinese people, both at home and abroad. According to a picture posted by a Weibo blogger, the Dior store in Northern California was met with such protesters on July 25th. Here are protesters in the streets of Toronto, Canada. The loudest protest happened on July 23rd when about 50 Chinese students protested next to the Dior flagship store on Champs-Élysées in Paris, France. The point of all these protesters is roughly the same. Dior's new skirt design plagiarizes the Chinese Han Fu's horse face pleat skirt, or Ma Mian Chuen in Chinese. The protesters claim it's cultural appropriation. They say that as long as Dior doesn't apologize and admit that this skirt is from the Han Fu culture, our protest will not stop, and our cultural export to France will not stop. The internationally renowned brand, Dior, launched a new skirt in July, and this is what it looks like. The skirt is priced at 29,000 RMB or about 3,800 US dollars. The official website described it in the introduction as Dior's iconic silhouette. Immediately afterward, one Chinese spotted this information and made a claim that it was a copy of the horse face pleat skirt from the Ming Dynasty in China. Horse face pleat skirts have four panel openings with an apron-like design in the front and the rear that facilitate the mounting and dismounting of horses, making riding more accessible. In mid-July, the official media of the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, issued a slew of inflammatory articles calling Dior's copying of the ancient Chinese horse face pleat skirt cultural appropriation. This tone was adopted in an article published in People's Daily, the CCP's highest ranking media. The Communist Youth League's official Weibo account also joined in solidarity. After Chinese students from overseas started the protest, Chinese media praised the protest in its coverage. One article reads, National pride is not the only reason for the youth to speak out. Patriotic instincts have now subconsciously influenced their everyday behavior. Dior's website has completely removed the skirt, and a search for mid-length skirt on Dior's French, British, and Italian websites returns only one skirt that's different from the horse face skirt. Whether or not the dress was plagiarized can be discussed in the fashion world. Mona, who works in fashion marketing, told Taiwan Central News Agency, I don't see the resemblance, either in terms of the shape or the color. We often take inspiration from different places or cultures when we make designs. For example, boots may come from cowboy culture, so I don't see why, not as long as they don't hurt or mock that culture. This was July 4th, 2022. Models walked down the catwalk in patchwork opera coats and trim jackets that were paired with long dresses. Dior designer Maria explained that she had considered local traditions of dressing and saw how flower patterns are interpreted in various regions of the world. The, the idea in uh, couture is to celebrate uh, all the time the dialogue between uh, art and craftsmanship. So my idea for the setup uh, couture is all the time to collaborate uh, with artists that are also interested in uh, collaboration with uh, artisan. Because no one in Eastern Europe has yet protested against this country style fashion. Some overseas Chinese netizens also said that even if the horse face pleated skirt was designed by a Chinese, its copyright has expired. Otherwise, aren't the suits Chinese people wear considered to be copycats? Some other netizens believe that fashion design inherently covers a variety of elements and that art and design have no national boundaries. What matters is who has a great design, not where the inspiration originated. In the streets of Paris on July 23rd, more than 10 Chinese counter-protesters were at the protest. They were mistreated by one of the protesters. One of the counter-protesters, Mill, was holding a sign that reads, Are skirts more important than human rights? He was not shouting slogans or engaging in violent behavior, just holding a sign. The counter-protester who was attacked later shared his impression of the protesters with the media, saying, They didn't speak out on June 4, 1989 when the Tiananmen massacre happened. They didn't speak out when the Uyghurs and Hong Kong people were suppressed. 
but now they are protesting for a skirt. It seems to them that skirts are more important than human rights. Today, it is increasingly difficult for international brands to remain inoffensive to the patriotism championed by the CCP as no one knows where the boundaries are. For example, at the Dior and Art Exhibition last November, a photo from 10 years ago taken by a renowned Chinese photographer sparked huge criticism. The woman in the photo was holding a classic Dior bag and wearing a Qing Dynasty gauntlet on her finger. The photo was criticized for vilifying Asians. Dior then removed the work from Dior's official online and offline content. The photographer also apologized, saying, I am a native Chinese and deeply in love with our motherland. I have reflected deeply and I blame myself for my childish ignorance at that time. She also said that in the future she will never forget to take the vigorous and confident spirit of the new era as the source of creation and tell our Chinese story with solid works. For example, in August last year, a Taiwanese actress had her contracts with some Chinese brands terminated for calling Taiwanese athletes national players during the Tokyo Olympics. Because Dior didn't respond to this incident, it had been labeled by Chinese fanatics as supporting the independence of Taiwan. After the bad reputation of socialism and communism, especially the communist movement and the Great Famine leaving a generation of Chinese people with painful memories, the CCP has cleverly found the banner of patriotism and nationalism to equate the party with the country and the nation. Chinese people who dare not and cannot say no to any policy of the Communist Party under the banner of patriotism championed by the party dare to go to the American embassies and consulates in China to throw eggs and stones, burn cars and American flags. Overseas students, old and young patriots, enjoying the right to freedom of expression through rallies and marches, which is something they don't have in China, have been expeditiously mobilized by the CCP to take to the streets to speak out for the party whenever the party is in need. In many cases, it isn't clear whether they take part in the protest out of a sense of justice or subservience to the CCP's interests. But having gone through long and comprehensive brainwashing by the CCP, most are willing to believe that they belong to the former. Over the past two decades, the world's luxury brands have paid close attention to the Chinese market. Before the pandemic in 2020, the Chinese were the world's largest consumers of luxury goods, consistently leading the world in spending on the latest fashion trends. Especially before the U.S.-China trade war, Fortune Character Group reported that Chinese tourists spent a total of 1.2 trillion RMB, or about 177.6 billion U.S. dollars, on everything from daily necessities to luxury goods overseas in 2015. More than 60% of these purchases were for luxury goods such as handbags, cosmetics, and cell phones, which accounted for 46% of global luxury sales. On January 20, 2022, an American management consulting company, Bain & Company, released the China Luxury Market Report 2021. It says that although Americans spent more on personal luxury goods than Chinese consumers in 2021 to become the world's number one, China is expected to become the world's largest luxury goods market by 2025. According to the Bain report, among the different categories, sales of leather products grew the fastest in the last two years with a growth rate of about 60%, followed by fashion with a growth rate of about 40%. In the eyes of many luxury brand merchants, China is full of rich people, and the level of wealth is astounding. According to the Huron Wealth Report 2020, the number of affluent families with 6 million RMB or about 940,000 US dollars in assets reached 5 million. The number of high net worth families with 10 million RMB or about 1.57 million US dollars in assets reached 2.02 million. And the number of ultra high net worth families with 100 million RMB in assets reached 130,000. According to a September 2020 report on the World Bank China website, China's per capita income is only about a quarter of the average of high-income countries, and about 373 million Chinese still live below the upper-middle income poverty line of 5.5 US dollars per day. Because China's population is so large, it makes a small percentage of the wealthy Chinese a desired market for big brands. 
At the same time, China's prevalent culture of saving face in comparison makes it necessary for many Chinese women to maintain a social life with high-end brands of fashion and accessories like handbags. In 2020, there was a very popular Chinese TV series titled "Nothing But Thirty," depicting the life of rich wives in Shanghai. The heroine carries a limited edition Chanel Lucky Charm, priced at about US seventy-five hundred. When she attends a party of rich wives, she finds that everyone has a Hermes. Later, she found herself cropped out of the photo posted on social media for carrying a less expensive handbag. In the photo, the woman standing in the C position is holding the most expensive Hermes handbag, Himalaya, priced at about US three hundred and ninety thousand. She later bit the bullet and bought a very expensive Hermes, and since then she hasn't been cropped out of the group photo. The heroine said. I took this bag because I wanted it to be an admission ticket. This is a snapshot of anxious Chinese people immersed in the Chinese Communist Party culture. However, many Chinese may see their luxury brand fervor cooled by the cooling economic environment over the coming years. The first signs of it are already visible. The Bain and Company report in January was optimistic, but six months later, Dior's parent company LVMH, the world's largest multinational luxury conglomerate, reported a double-digit drop in sales in China for the second quarter of 2022. The French group still managed to maintain two consecutive quarters of growth. The resurgence of tourism in Europe and the recovery of sales in the U.S. helped Louis Vuitton to offset the loss of business in China caused by the Chinese Communist Party's COVID-19 clearance policy. The situation in China is different from that in the West. The average American is spending less on discretionary items, and Walmart issued its second profit warning in just over two months on July 25th. Relatively wealthier Americans, including American tourists returning to Europe, are continuing to spend. I'm very excited that our American dollar is so strong. Just when I'm coming to Europe,、um, I was、uh, in Milan last month, and it wasn't as strong. Now that I'm in Paris, it's equal, if not even a little better. So it would definitely encourage me. To shop more here, I think the dollar and euro being at together at the same amount is great for Americans. Our dollar is buying us more. In the first half of 2022, Louis Vuitton posted higher operating profits and margins, with core revenues up 34 percent over a year ago to 10.2 billion pounds, and net profit up 23 percent to 6.5 billion pounds. The company raised prices for fashion and leather goods by three to seven percent in the first half of the year, and consumers didn't react or complain. But that was not the case in China, where consumers spent in retaliation after the Communist Party first lifted the embargo in 2020. But then, in the midst of repeated outbreaks, the Communist Party's prolonged policy of zero COVID, people whose survival was in jeopardy tightened their purse strings. The CFO of Louis Vuitton told the Financial Times, "We were strongly affected by China. There was a sharp slowdown, and there's no miracle cure." Adding that there was a big question mark about the market's prospects. There's nothing that allows us to predict whether those hard lockdowns will come back or not. The Financial Times reported in late June that luxury department store Lane Crawford, who has a flagship store located in Shanghai, had no business during the two months it was locked down. When it reopened, shoppers rushed to shop. But this enthusiasm for consumption soon waned. Its president said, "For the first weekend, our store was open. All our VIP suites were fully booked, and we did sales surpassing a normal weekend. However, on the whole, traffic is down. People are still cautious. So for us, it's been higher conversion of a lower rate of traffic." We have observed that the Chinese economy is not only facing major disruptions from the zero COVID policy, but now is confronted with a real estate crisis, a banking crisis, and a local fiscal crisis. The model of real estate-driven economic growth has come to an end in this red country. These bubbles are like dangerous extreme weather. When not careful, they can bankrupt a large number of enterprises and turn China into a tail rot country. It is predictable, though, that the CCP will continue to reinforce among Chinese people the propaganda of patriotism and nationalism, which history has proven that for totalitarian governments there is no better way to deal with crises and find opportunities than the banner of patriotism and nationalism.